Um, this little side note is just uh, follows the Midnight Thriller uh, episode that we just did. And uh, my wife, who has a very good eye for these things, noticed something very interesting in one of the covers. And this is uh, the book uh, M1, Motive for Murder, by um, Nigel Brent. And that's the book here. And the um, interesting thing is, you always sometimes you look at a cover, and this is a British paperback from the 50s, and you say, where have I seen that cover before? And you say, hmm. So where we've seen it is in the, and I did mention about a Bantam book, and here's the book. Okay, it's As Long As I Live. And uh, let, me just get, it a let me just get the number. It's by Ione Sandberg Schreiber, and it's Bantam number 320, probably from the 19, late 1940s. So here we see the image has been used, uh, copied. And uh, a lot of times the author, I mean an artist, will uh, see a certain image that he's looking for. He'll see it on another book. Uh, he'll see it, in this case, it's a, a, a British, um, British artist, maybe saw the American edition of, the, of this book, and said, you know, I'd just like to have that image on my cover, and I'll put in other things around it. And uh, sometimes they, they would take uh, uh, images from, uh, from, especially from magazines, uh, uh, magazine advertising, Whatever image struck their fancy that they thought they would keep files of, of uh, papers, magazines, posters, all kinds of things to get just for images. Uh, in, in those days before you had uh, iPhones and computers and all of that, they would have uh, physical files of, of just different kinds of images, all kinds of things. A, a woman screaming, a guy with a gun, a woman with a gun, different kind of things like that. And uh, so my wife Lucille has got a good eye for this kind of thing saw this and noticed it right away that it's from this book. But the, the reason why she noticed this book is because she's an artist herself and she's done over the years uh, boxes that uh, recreate the cover art on vintage paperbacks. So this is a, her recreation of uh, As Long As I Live, uh, Bantam number 320 right here. Um, and what, th what this is, is this was a box, a wooden box, that they sold in, um, in Michael's. And uh, she, uh, she painted it and she uh, made, it, uh, made it a beautiful box. And the thing is that, of course, it's, it fits the book perfectly. So... There you have just an interesting little aside, little side note about like uh, where sometimes the idea for art comes from. How does a, how does an image get on a paperback book? An artist sees the uh, image someplace else on another book, a pulp magazine, a regular magazine. He sees it in an advertising. Uh, maybe uh, you know there's uh, cars uh, that are advertising, uh, women uh, fashion magazines, all kinds of things that they get ideas for uh, for um, for that uh, rather than uh, go the other way with uh, getting models uh, hiring models and then ha having them dress in costumes and all of that which uh, is very expensive if you have a, 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 a good if you're an artist in the uh, 40s 50s 60s 70s and you had a great file of uh, of pictures of images of all kinds of things you know, and you'd have it alphabetized by subject or by topic or whatever it is. You know, you could really do do some great artwork picking out different things. What and did Glansman call it? He called it something. Sometimes they call it a, a, a picture morgue or a file morgue or a file. They, everybody has a different name for it. McGuire had a certain name for it, and Glansman had a certain name. But uh, these were artists that we that we knew, Robert McGuire and, and Louis Glansman. But a lot of a lot of artists who uh, did paperback book covers um, had these files, and uh, it was important. This is the day bef the days before computers, before iPhones, and all of that. So you 
the only way you could get images was to uh, cut them out of magazines and, and file them away for future use. If you found a, a, an interesting image that you think, yeah, I could use this later on for a, for a book cover. And that's what they did. So it's just, it's just interesting that you see where this comes from here. So this is a 1950, probably 1955, 1956 British paperback, and this is probably around 1949, 1950 uh, American vintage paperback. So you see where the... Where yeah, the, that's also an example of what not to do when you're trying to fix a book. You see that by where it oh, says, this, yeah, yeah, someone filled right. in with magic marker. Yeah, that's that's a different story. Uh, this isn't a I mean, great copy. The color copy. is good, but not when it goes over the name. Yeah, this isn't a great copy, but it has some damage to it. Thing with with these midnight thrillers is, uh, you know, I'm happy with whichever ones I can get. If I can find, and if I ever find one that uh, that I don't have, whatever condition, I I'm I'm very happy to get it because uh, they're they're very scarce, and you don't see them in in the really great condition. So uh, this one has some uh, damage on it because the guy, tried, whoever tried to fix it or clean it up or something, but wasn't just such a great job. But it is what it is. Try to find what you can find. Uh, and it's getting harder and harder to find, find these. So um, uh, people should be happy with what they have. I'm happy with what I have. And uh, just wanted to check, just to clue you in onto this uh, I thought it was an interesting uh, sideline to the previous video. It's probably running longer than the previous video because <laughs> I just have a motor mouth. But uh, I like to talk books and stuff, and uh, this is an interesting little sidebar. So uh, with that in mind, I want to thank you for looking, and uh, we'll see you next time.